Hey guys, this is James from TDB bringing you another in between episode. So this is uh, has, was a request from Sockbert. So this one is for you, Sockbert, who requested I review um, the Shaguan Happy Tool, which I have lying around. This is a 2008 um, special Shaguan production, um, and this is actually one of the earlier pours I bought. I bought this a few years ago. It may have actually even been 2013. Um, so it's been sitting in my stash for a while. I actually finished one of these guys off uh, a while ago. Um, and I, when I did drink through a few Shagwans last year, this one did stand out as being good. I don't think it's quite as easy to find, but I did some searching on Taobao. Looks like you'd still find it for uh, $5 or maybe even a little bit less than that. Um, so it's a 2008 production. I think it actually uses leaves that are a little bit older, so the leaves, some of them at least, might be a slightly older material. And it's brewing up um, a decently dark color. This is the second and third brew. I drank the first one. Um, so yeah, let's get to the tea. So it's sort of a fruity, fruity aroma with maybe a little bit of pine in there as well. And the brew. Surprisingly soft. Um, there's still definitely some of that smoke in it, but it's decently integrated. It's not dominated by smoke, smoke at this point. Body is decently thick, actually. Um, probably medium. Uh, it's not the thickest tea, um, but it's not thin either. Mm. And... Uh, yeah, and there's definitely a fair amount of roughness in the finish, some smoke. Uh, definitely a tea to enjoy for people that like pungent teas. Maybe a hint of herbalness uh, that's developing in this tea. Smooth. The texture is actually decently engaging and interesting. And, and quite similar, a um, little bit more of those pine or fern notes coming into this. And it's still quite strong, so I'm going to keep this fourth infusion really light too. And I would definitely say that this is a tea uh, that, depending on what sorts of tea, you may or may not like it. It's really not a tea that you should spend very much money on. Um, you know, I don't necessarily regret this purchase, but this is also not a tea that I think I would drink very often at this point. Um, so if I were to do it again, I probably wouldn't buy them. Uh, but if if you're someone that maybe goes for teas sort of like the White Whale or the Old Bear from White Tea or is a fan of Shagwan, I think this tea does stand out a little bit above the average. So a little bit more floral notes. I've noticed that some of these shagwans especially tend to brew out and give out uh, a lot of, a, a fairly nice aroma, even if you're not necessarily a fan of the taste and, and have a very unique um, feel to it. And so this one is kind of, has some of that, uh, but there's also some of it that doesn't taste exactly like a typical shagwan production. If you look at the leaf material, it's a lot of really small leaves, a lot of buds. So this tea does tend to brew out fast, um, at least according to my older notes. Yeah, so a little bit more of those florals, a little bit of butter in this steep as well. It's still quite strong, still very pungent, um, still quite bitter for sure. Um, the taste doesn't have a ton of depth of it. It's still mainly focused at the front of the mouth. Um, and. I could see this tea being a nice sort of like way to get a quick caffeine fix. It's strong, um, probably don't have this on an empty stomach. Yeah, some pine, some fern. Yeah, and is it, the smoke is actually fairly well integrated. It'd be hard to taste a different tea after this, so this will probably be um, the tea I have until lunchtime, um, just because it is so strong. Leaf material looks like a mix, a blend of stuff. It looks a little bit darker. Um, yeah, and so 
with these teas, I think I think uh, it's really up to the drinker's style if they like them. Personally, I found that I tend to gravitate more as far as factory tea towards uh, Mung Hai Tea Factory Productions. I found I've drank a number of shallow ones, and I've just found that I don't enjoy them nearly as much as other people. Um, so, uh, so that that sort of leads me to dislike these sorts of teas. But this one's actually pretty okay. Yeah, it comes in this cute little pink box. Um, and so this is really nice just to store the tea. I could see some people buying this tea just for the box. So if you unwrap it and take a look, have a smell. There's a little bit more of that mint and menthol-y sort of character to it. And you can see one thing that they do with these productions, they put some of the really nice leaves just out at the top so you can see them very obviously. Uh, the, the blend itself is not that nice in that sense. It's not purely golden buds. And you'll see this with a couple different productions, including some of the non-Joe tools, I think. Um, so uh, smaller leaves in general, uh, but you can see that they do a little bit of beautifying as far as like making sure it looks nice. Uh, for prospective people that might be interested or using it as a display piece, I suppose. Um, I would only be interested in this for drinking. So, yeah, this will go back into my Pumador, and it will continue to hang out there for a while, um, and I would hope that it will just continue to mellow out and become hopefully a little bit nicer, um, and probably not one I'm going to revisit for at least, I don't know, another four or five years, probably. Uh, so this tea is from 2008, so uh, at that point it'd be like 12 or 13 years old. So that'd probably be a good point uh, for me to revisit this tea. Um, anyways, I thank you guys for tuning in, and I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this in-between. So let me know what else you want to see. If there's stuff that I have easy access to that's in my stash and stuff like this, I'm happy to review it. Um, and uh, it's always interesting for me to see how I feel about these teas and the purchases that I did fairly early on when I was drinking poor. So thank you guys for tuning in, and cheers.